You handle that net like you've never done anything else. He's impressed. <laughs> One day, he hopes the tree will have grown tall enough to sustain the world. <laughs> but today, your focus is getting this one to become one with the tree. Now that you've seen the Nono's connection with the tree with your own eyes, you have no reason to doubt. <laughs> From this day on, he'll make nurturing the Pensai into a tree of life, a life goal, not only for our village's sake, but for all of us, everyone. <laughs> One day, the land won't be as peaceful. Not even your Mooma will be able to protect us. He says you'd better hurry back to the village before your Mooma comes looking for you. You did good here today. No, she's got lots on her mind and needs rest after the raid last night on the Lupin camp with her disciples. Wonders if they let the Predator family live or not. Yeah, you mawa. He lost you there for a while, but no memory is alone. It's part of a trail you can follow. For the water. He says he remembers every single day he devoted to growing the tree of life, but now he's afraid it might be in vain. Kabobe farhi. The tree started to die when the end of days begun, and it wasn't long after that that the world eaters arrived. The genetic evolution that occurred after the apocalypse that Toxinol Corporation inflicted on the land set the World Eater's DNA into overdrive. His friend Gizmo is working on a Mekton and needs help defeating the Jumbo Puff at the end of the West Route. Wiz is still repairing his octopod to confront the murk puff that dwells deep down under the surface at the end of the northwest route. Noko has tamed the midget and is preparing to take on the hoof puff at the end of the east route. Finally, Goop is almost done with the Goo Glide a machine able to ride the waves of the surf all the way out to the Porky Puff at the end of the route to the southeast. Kabobe Farhi. Out of date, says his friends, are gearing up to stop the World Eaters. There's one at the end of each route. Oloi Bobo Paweg. The road ahead won't be easy, but he's counting on your support. His friends aren't strong enough to end this on their own. Could I? He, far be far. he wants you to understand that you'll all die if the tree isn't saved. Regardless, you'll meet again once you've played your part in the tribe war and the situation with the world eaters. Getting the hang of it. Quickest way out is through the roof where they came in, and the rope looks strong enough to climb. Tree of Life is dying, 
its days are numbered. Without help, it can't endure the environmental change and assault from the world eaters. A signpost maps it out for the cartographically challenged. Let's see. be the world eater that chewed off out of date's leg. You'll need a hat trick to bring that down. Look, a survivor. Glad to see someone made it out alive. He's heard the stories about the terror inflicted by the world eaters to other enclaves, but never expected one to come all the way here. He worries there won't be much left to save if this continues, even if the Tree of Life survives the attack. He doesn't know what your connection is to this place, but something tells him you've stayed true to your heart. Anyway, he needs help and says it's by your actions you'll be judged, not by your intentions. He's grateful for that. You still seem to have a spark of light in you. What's there to like about light? It hurts to look at. Not as much as it hurts to look at you. Always making this personal. And you're always trying to pretend it's not. 
There's out of date again. He must have missed something important. Out of date says you will make a better stand against the World Eaters with the support of a tribe, and there are two nearby. The Myriad tribe is likely to be a good match as they act on the understanding of the greater good and have a code of honor. Regardless of who you choose, it won't be easy as the conflict between the tribes is worse than ever, teetering on the brink of war. The Myriad's conviction to stop the World Eaters began when the Leviathans rose from the depths of the surf. Siding with the Myriad's movement for wholeness in a fragmented world might seem like the logical thing to do, but is it the right thing? One thing's certain, though. Destiny arrives all the same. The Jagni tribe only ever had one conviction, to bring balance to the world by wiping out the weak. They believe a cleansing is necessary to restore the world and want to let the world eaters bring down the tree of life. But siding with Jagni isn't necessarily a bad thing. Fate will find a way. Out of date says someone needs to break the stalemate and shift the balance of power to either Jagni's or Myriad's side. He believes the tribe Sifus, Myriad especially, will listen to you and expects you to pay at least one of them a visit and play your part. Out of date will be waiting for you beneath the tree of life if you lose track of what you need to do. Another fork in the road. It's either the tunnel or the motor bridge. What'll it be? It's unusual that natural tunnels like this still exist. Most of them got flooded.
This area was beautiful before the tribe war began. Look at it now. It's a war zone. Better hold on to that. That's the Myriad Tribe's fortress. Will they be friends or foe? You should head up there. That way you'll know. It's a beaten path to that door. If you go there, you'd better make an entrance. Let's see. Says they're wary of strangers. They're at war. They don't just let anyone see the Sifu, but there's something different about you. The Myriad tribe act on understanding of the greater good and a code of honor. They believe uniting the tribes is the only way to restore the peace. The Sifu is convinced that defeating the World Eaters and saving the Tree of Life is the only way to make the world a better place. He welcomes you to the Myriad Fort and introduces himself as the tribe's Sifu. But he was hoping you'd show up. The news of a vigilante ronin on crusade crossing the Great Wall through the crack in Bunker 101 has preceded you. The wall that separates them from the other side? The wasteland you came from? He guesses the time spent there just left a blank space in your memory, as empty and barren as the wasteland itself. There's something about your spirit that sparks memories of you as a kidling. He can still sense you're kind-hearted. 
The Sifu says sometimes one memory can make another come to life. He hasn't thought about your Muma for ages, even though she taught him a lot. He was one of the original Wang Fu disciples. Your Muma invented Wang Fu. Originally, it consisted of unarmed combat and the six weapons, the boomerang, the shuriken, the bow, the staff, the nanchuk, and the hook and chain. Myriad wants unity between the tribes. Their goal is understanding of the greater good and establishing a code of honor. If you believe there's some good in everyone, there's still hope for tomorrow. You'll unite the tribes and defeat the world eaters to save the tree of life. All the ghosts are gonna hide. Eh, eh. He was hoping you'd join them. You understand that there's no harm in doing good to others. Brita. The Sifu was waiting for something to tip the balance in their favor, and with you by their side, he's confident you can unite the other tribes. The one you should coerce first is the Jagni tribe. Their kin have run out of options and found themselves backed into a corner. Even those who desire peace have been forced to prepare for war. He wants you to focus. These are the new rival outposts your tribe needs to take control of. He says you'll regret not being on their side. The only way you'll learn their secrets, Wung Fu and the tribe weapon now, is if you defeat him. And that will never happen. You both have gentle minds, so they want to wage a gentle war. A war that bonds as much as it breaks. Tells you not to be afraid. Your fate cannot be taken from you. Claim the rival outposts and earn the right to wield the tribe weapon. Once you've dealt with the rival's outposts, you'll challenge their Sifu to unite their tribe with yours and let your kin share land again. Seeing you brings back his memories of the old village. He remembers your kind and unselfish soul and can sense you still have it in you, the will to do good. Anyway, the memories you make with your family are strong and can sometimes come to life. Passing the old village on your way to the first rival outpost might help. That's the Myriad Fort.
asks you to check out the wares, confident you'll find everything you need here. Says there's usually a line, but today's your lucky day. Asks you to check out the wares, confident you'll find everything you need here. Suggests you take it easy. You won't strike a good deal here if you're in a hurry. says you'll get a special price and a wrap-up on the double. The doors here are always open for a potential customer. See what they might want to offer. Wonders if you'd have stayed so centered if your parents had been here to guide you. Didn't have much else to say, so no problem.
seems like a peculiar item. Beware, that's a mump up ahead. They were hit hard by evolution, the wonky ones especially, deformed and unfurred. Flex up.
time is lost on this place, but it evokes a tingling sensation. There's something special about it, drawing you closer. Let's see. As time passes, memories fade, and sometimes feelings change. It's not about who you were, it's about who you'll become. This story is far from over. Echoes of a long-lost past, like whispers in the wind. Here's someone who takes each day as it comes. He wonders where you've been. He hopes you've been out at the lake, practicing your swimming technique. He understands Wang Fu is hard. That's why your Muma only has six disciples. Doing just one thing helps you get more done in less time. He thinks you should really know how to swim by now. And he'll be honored. He says, that wasn't too bad, was it? He says a feeling that you're going to drown is a great reminder of the need to learn how to swim. But you need practice, lots of practice. Judging by your Mooma's look, it seems you forgot something. You promised you'd train with her before the sun goes down. It's time to go. The dedication to training is important. You can't rely solely on the fact that Wang Fu is in your blood. You should know, practice makes perfect. She'll see you at the village square. She'll be waiting for you. There will be a surprise for you at the end, too. Here's another familiar face with lights on his mind. Why? Not dark. He was hoping you could help him pick up some scrap for a thingamajig he's working on. He thinks you're truly a kidling of your environment. You should look for things that are recyclable. It shouldn't take you too long to find some. He wonders what usefulness you found. He says every little thing counts. He can work wonders with almost anything and asks if you know how to upcycle. That's the spirit. You can't make a difference unless you get your hands dirty. 
He'd love to teach you to upcycle, and the scrap you found would be a good start. You did well, but he can't help but wonder why you decided to craft a weapon. He says you don't really need a weapon when you're born one. He's looking forward to seeing what you'll make next. It seems you have a talent for this. It looks like she's starting to lose her patience. You know she doesn't like waiting for you. She wants to see you on the village square right away. Then you've got a good excuse. You share a responsibility to prevent hardship on nature and the environment. It's your future. She wants you to grow up and start thinking for yourself. You really need to find yourself before she's gone. She won't live forever, you know that. But she intends to make the most of every day she gets, especially the ones you share together. Betty? You've always followed your own path, but this time she needs you to follow her. They look determined, 
Better watch out. Ole Ulaga. He asks you to stop right there and wonders where you think you're going. He says that it's not too late for you to turn back, though. Popolo. There's no way they'll let you pass. Diferesit. He wants to know who you think you are. Diferesit. He says you're right. Nobody can tell him what he can and can't do, and that includes you. She asks if you're hurt. What happened? If confidence is silent and insecurity is loud, she thinks you're absolutely right. The most important thing is that you're okay. It's time to focus on your training now. Someone close to heart, doing what he does best? He asks if you could help him, too, before you leave for training. He'll talk to her, sure, but you know she wants you to accept responsibility for your own actions and future. He suggests you get going and find him gadgets and ideas for how you can upcycle some old fabrics. He's curious to see what you found. He's all for renewal and has even considered making the trip out into the wilds to look for a bio-nucleus pool and refresh his DNA. He says it's about time you learned how and offers to teach you, starting with the scrap you found.
The style might be too edgy for his taste, but it looks sharp on you. Tariman. You should take it with you. Wear it to practice. Lazy. He's looking forward to seeing what you'll make next. It seems you have a talent for this. Your Muma says it's about time you got here. Says being on time would be better yet. She says she is eager to get started. You don't have much time left before the sun goes down. Your Muma says you did well today. She's so proud of you. Andro? Thanks you for being such a good student. Masama. Been working on a present for you, with the help of Gizmo and Wiz. Ben Nampusa. You should go see him and find out what it is. You've deserved it. Your Muma says she's never seen an apparatus as green as this little thing. It's wonderful. Amun. A piece of scraptronics like this has built-in old world tech that makes it a potent communication device. It's called an automaton and it's hardwired to your DNA. It'll follow wherever you go and see whatever you see. Says it's not a record keeper, more like a companion. Kala. Your Muma says you look tired. No wonder, it's been a long day. Says a good rest makes you ready for tomorrow. Rest and you'll find strength for tomorrow. Nothing could stop Luka Lupin from setting the world on fire. Your Muma urges you to blaze a trail. A burnt kidling will learn to dread fire. That's just adding fuel to the flames. Give it a last burst and you'll make it. And Sonbara. Your Muma says this is it. The time has come. She must fight Lupa Lupin. This time there's no escape. She can hear him coming. Kanamunta. Whatever happens, you need to know she loves you. And everything she's done has been to protect you, your Popsy, and those she was chosen to lead. Here it comes. The past coming to hold the present. <laughs>
You must go through fire and water to make it out of here. Your Numa says you can make it if you believe in it. Where she goes, you go. Blood is thicker than water. You're in deep surf. Don't make waves. The surf goes where it wants to go. It'll take you to the shore as long as you go with the flow. Death is not to be feared by one who has lived life with a pure heart. A part of her will live on in you. The creature is hungry for more. Nothing is going to stand in its way now. If a sacrifice is made for someone else, it's not lost, but passed on to the next. Life must go on. Real sacrifice comes from love and necessity when all other options are exhausted. The ultimate test of conscience is the willingness to give up anything to save what you truly care about. What you do for yourself dies with you. What you do for your kin remains and makes you immortal in their memory. As the moment fades and is lost, the only thing that remains is loneliness. It doesn't mean you'll forget your past. It simply means you need to move on.